there's an interesting vehicle uh, that's a mind uh, a, a mind game on six. I can tell you that part, all right? Because you're on tonight, right? So, yeah, they, they play. There's a mind game on six that basically will give you some really insights into his backstory, and you're going to see that he's a really good guy. Because that's the one thing that we've been playing with in the show on a regular basis is whether the motivation of all our characters at any point in time was good. Were they good people at one point in time? What made them evil? Uh, it's a funny thing. I've been having this debate with the writers when we get to season four because we're introducing a new character. And we've got this very detailed backstory that made that person evil. And we're arguing what makes people evil. So we do have that in that, that episode coming up. You're going to learn a lot more about Six. And you're going to learn a lot more about his past. So that's going to be fun. If you're a Six fan, you'll love that episode. What about the android? She's showing some glitches, it looks like, or at least something. Yeah, well, what we've been playing with with the android is the, the upgrade. Okay, has these human qualities and can they coexist? And you're going to see that factored a lot more into the show because uh, you, if you've been watching reports today, even from Elon Musk and everybody, they're talking about androids getting human qualities and how dangerous that is for the world. Elon Musk has apparently gone on record to say androids will screw up the whole world, right? And he's afraid of them, right? So we're going to take that on a very much further level because we're going to give human qualities. We've given human qualities to Andrew. But you're going to see that there's a big conflict between being sympathetic and having feelings to being an objective sort of uh, person who serves the crew. So is it all stemming from just that programming that she's taken on, or is somebody else perhaps tweaking with her program? There is a backstory that you will get three or four episodes from now that is so fun that you'll like you'll embrace the android a lot more all right because her backstory we've given hints to you a couple times that two and the android had a backstory that you don't know much about you're going to learn a lot about that in three or four episodes and that's going to tell you that it's not just the upgrade how's that okay it was revealed earlier in the season that uh, five has a sister so, I mean, are we going to get to that eventually, or is that going to be right. more into next season? You want season four. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And her, the sister story is really cool. And in fact, that's uh, what I'm, okay, without giving too much away, I've been on the phone with the writers, and I was in the room the other day discussing exactly what the sister is, what what her relationship with Five is, and it's coming out of beautifully. Beautifully. We didn't have what the story was. We just sort of planted a sister. So now we're writing the story. But the sister story is going to be interesting. And again, it's going to get back to the roots of what the show is. The environment that you're brought up in, you know, is what ex they are. And if her sister and her, she were separated, right? What influences on her sister made her sister who she is? What influences on Five made her who she is? Very different backstories. This season we've been seeing a lot of separation because four is, of course, off the ship is not most of the time, or all the time, and so is six. Are we going to see a reintegration of either one of those characters back into the ship environment, or are they just gone from that environment? Um, they have to come together, okay? You can't, the Raza has to be the Raza. I mean, the crew has to be the crew. It, what we're doing right now is we're letting you learn a lot more about them so that if, if and when they do come back sort of thing, you understand that they're the more, you understand the best. So this is a vehicle really to get you closer to who the characters are. I'm not saying they all come back easily and beautifully, right? But the objective was to get them back together. There are some problems doing that. What about the uh, Jace Corso, the original one? Uh, listen, I, I have to be honest. I'm the one that killed him. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm the one that killed him. What? It was you. Yeah, it was me. Uh, just, you know, there's a, there's a lot of pressure to kill characters nowadays. Game of Thrones started this whole thing, and what happened was he wasn't supposed to die. Okay, but I don't want people to assume every character is invincible. I mean, what fun would the show be if they're all coming back and they're all going to live all the time? So you have to be quite aware of the fact that any one of the characters can die at any time. 
I mean, it would not be fun. I mean, I don't know about you, but I used to watch shows and, oh, there's five minutes left in the episode. They're not going to die, you know? They're going to save the day. They're going to escape, you know? And I used to always watch the clock when I was watching television to see when this situation is going to be resolved. I'm not going to allow that with this show. I have to have you really worried that they're not going to live. They're not going to make it back. And I'm going to make sure that, that you all, without giving it away, I'm going to make sure you're worried about whether or not they never die. But you also have these alternate world versions of the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the alternate world. We did that as a, a little fun thing for the Jace Corso character. And now we have, because the, um, the Marauder escaped through that uh, time warp thing, uh, the, the reality warp. Uh, so we get to play with that. And we will keep playing with that. Okay, the J like I say, the Jace Corso character, his character actually, when I when I told everybody we're killing him, it was because his character was a difficult one to keep going anyways, because he wasn't really part of the crew. You know, if I told all you guys you were multi-millionaires tomorrow and you were gonna be billionaires, let's say, it's, it's nowadays. If I told you you're gonna be a billionaire, would you really wanna be on the Raza, you know? Or would you go back? So we were trying to dissipate the storyline for him. That's why I let him go. The great actor, good character, but the storyline for four or five years is going to be tough anyways. Well, but again, Jace Corso, as we know him now, is part of one of the originals. Yeah, Jace Corso is still reality. alive. Yeah. Okay. yeah, no, he's still alive. Um, we killed him in one reality, not in the other. So he could come back, yeah. So should we be worried about four at this point? Because <laughs> um, you have hinted at the fall of the House of Bashir. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a very important storyline. Well, let me ask you something. If for if uh, the house of Rashida fell, what would happen to four? What would you want to happen? Would you want to say, geez, I screwed up, you know, yeah. that I don't like who I was? Because yeah. really, I think you should you should want that for every character. You should want every character in this show to like who they are today and not want to be who they were before their memory was wiped. That's an important part of the show. I mean, the reason I was brought to the comic book originally is because the idea that you can change who you are and be a better person and do more. I put a speech into the opening episode where two is oxygen deprived about how harder it is to be good than bad. And I added that specially to the script because that's what I want the show to be about. So I think Four's got to realize that being a real rat, you know, isn't really the way to go for him. It's not what he's good at. How difficult is it to write that sort of oh crap moment at the end for every episode? To always oh, it's a lot of work. Unfortunately, we don't pull it off every episode. <laughs> but no, 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 we throw things in. I mean, it's uh, there's been a debate whether that's good or not. You know, because some people get really mad that they have to wait a week to find something out. You know, and with streaming nowadays, that doesn't do you much. I mean, if you're watching Netflix, there's that little thing running around saying, "Do you want the next episode?" And it doesn't matter if you watch. If you're on Netflix, it doesn't matter if you watch it that minute or watch it a week later, right? But in normal, like television programming, sci-fi, we want you to come back tonight. You know, in fact, this show's success depends on keeping you there because audiences tend to soften up towards the end of a show because they know it's going to be on Netflix in the next month or so. So if you miss the last three or four episodes, you go to Netflix, you'll find them. So it's important that we do that every episode to keep you coming back. And we want you to want to be there first, too. We want you to chat about it. We want you to be excited about it. So, But it is hard. It's really, really hard. And what we've done is sometimes we know a storyline that we're going to introduce in season four or five, and we'll hint it. You've seen the hints about androids becoming a problem. You've seen the hints about aliens. And because we like to believe we are true sci-fi, which is hard to find nowadays, we're, we have to play with those things and hint to you that aliens will be a big deal, androids will be a big deal, that our characters will be in danger every week. So that's what we're trying to do with this tag. So when you uh, play with a character's reality, or even to deal with the after effects of that, so six went through what to him was a real experience. Now he's back in the you know, hope is the real world. But how does he really know that? Does he question that? Along yeah, the way? that's that's what he's going to have to do, right? But six has so many questions to ask himself, right? He ha he doesn't know who he is right now. 
and you're going to see him struggling with that because his real motivation is to save everybody. You know, always wants to save people. That's what he wants. And I think you'll, you'll see, even in this episode coming up, that he's still debating what's being a good guy, what's being a bad guy. And when he, he we reveal some things about his backstory, you're going to see he has some hard decisions in order to be good to other people versus himself. This is the guy willing to sacrifice for the right moral story. And he's probably got that. He's got that more than anybody else on the show. Not fair?